Hey guys, good morning. It's about 6.45 a.m. right now, and I am about to do a little bit of quick harvesting. I have some beans that need to be harvested. It's supposed to rain all morning. In fact, right now it says 70% coverage, so I don't even know how far we're gonna get in this video. I came out here to harvest and completely forgot to grab a basket, but we'll get by with the bucket. So right here, I have this row of Kalima green beans. It does have some volunteer zinnias and stuff growing in it, but I left. The walkways of the no-dig garden have gotten pretty intense because I was not able to source any fresh wood chips this year. So if you want to find wood chips, you can typically contact arborists. You can contact, there's a service called Chip Drop. I'm gonna talk and pick so that if it starts raining, I will have at least got something done. Um, chip drop, you can sign up. And you do have to renew your sign up like every, I think they say it's best. If you've signed up before and you've been like, oh, I signed up a year ago, I never got anything. But you're supposed to renew it every like 30 or 60 days. I've done all of it. I've called multiple arborists. I've really tried to stay on top of getting wood chips. But when you live very rurally, it can be kind of difficult. Like I'm not on the way to anywhere. We live like 15 minutes out of town limits. And so you, you can typically really luck out and get a lot of stuff if you live either in town or you live on the way to the arborist's yard where they park their truck. Because essentially they're looking for a place to dump the wood chips from tree work that they're doing that isn't going to cost them more time and money like out of their way. I was never able to source wood chips in Arkansas either. Here I've had a couple of loads dropped off just from consistently calling arborists. Um, I'm in the Midlands of South Carolina and so a lot of the wood is pine which is okay but pine does raise the acidity of soil and it's great for walkways, and that's what I was hoping to be able to get. Man, these plants are loaded. I like it. Um, I was hoping to be able to get more pine to put down in these walkways, and I just, I wasn't able to. Which means I have weedy walkways. It's okay. We'll do the same thing as we did last year in this garden. Put the chickens in it at the end of the year, and then once they've scratched through everything, we'll put a tarp down. And then hopefully by next year, I'll be able to get a good deal of wood chips and mulch it heavily again. Right now we're just gonna have to weed eat the, the walkways because this grass came through. This variety of green beans is called Kalima, C-A-L-I-M-A. -A. Um, I think it's said that way, it might be Kalima anyway. Um, this is my favorite kind of green beans. They're the really like long, thin French style, filet style that are not stringy and not real thick. <clears throat> I like picking them when they're a little younger. I mean, you can't really tell a massive difference, but these are really thin. They're so tasty. I was hoping to get these in today because it is going to be raining a lot and I wanted to be able to preserve them while I'm stuck in the house today. Oh, that's weird the leaf off. A little sluggy. That's actually fairly unusual for us. We don't get a lot of slugs. It's not usually wet enough, but man, this has been such a wet and an unusually cool year, which I'd shared with you guys a little while ago. I like to watch Ryan Hall on YouTube. He does like weather forecasting and storm chasing. And he was explaining that part of the country was gonna be a lot wetter and cooler this year. And I'm in the part that he was saying that and it has proven to be absolutely accurate. Right here next to my green bean row, I have a tomato that volunteered and I left and I'm just letting it sprawl. Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a spoon variety, which is the really tiny little tomatoes. That's what it looks like to me. Um, those plants have really smooth stems and really tiny blossoms because they produce really tiny tomatoes. And I'm assuming that's what it is. It was probably planted by a bird last year because I had them growing over there last year. If you are dealing with slugs, 
they're, they are, they typically are more common in places they get a lot of rain and moisture, but the best way I've seen to deal with them, if you're dealing with like a lot of them and they they will damage, especially soft bodied fruits. Like if you've got strawberries and, um, like leafy things that are on the softer side, lettuces and stuff like that. That's what I've dealt with slugs. Um, where I have lived here and in Arkansas where it's very hot, usually slugs are kind of a spring or fall problem. It's very unusual to see one like I just did at the middle of June because usually by now it's really too hot and dry for slugs. But as I said, cooler and more damp. But beer traps are a really good way to deal with slugs if they're damaging your stuff, which is where you take like a really shallow bowl or even a lid. Um, depends on if you have the little bitty slugs or if you've got a big issue with like big ones. If you had big ones, you would want to do a bowl. But uh, you just put some beer and something and nestle it down into the soil around your plants and they'll actually get in it and they'll drown. I don't know why beer, but it does work. I'm kind of going through here and weeding at the same time as picking these, just pulling up, just pulling up some of the grasses that have cropped up in between these plants. That's actually one of the biggest issues I'm dealing with with this weather is that with it being cooler, I mean, it's cooler for South Carolina. It's still like high 80s, you know, like 28 Celsius, something like that. It's been our average, so like 88 degrees. Um, and I know for a lot of people that's still really warm, but for here in June, for us to not be having highs in the 90s is, it's unusual. For it to still be getting as cool as it is at night is unusual. But it is causing the grass and the weeds to grow like crazy. And then of course, it's raining, so it's hard to be out here pulling them, so. So I know not everybody has the amount of space that we have, but I think this is really good to note. Right here, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plants in about a five foot by 18 inch space. So like one row of these bush bean plants. And here's what I just picked, which is about a quarter of this five gallon bucket full from that one little row. That's pretty awesome. So with any plants that you are growing, I know if you've been here, you've heard me say these things over and over, but repetition is good for us. It helps us learn and retain information. And I'm probably gonna keep repeating things because there are new people here all the time. And we want them to learn, right? <laughs> so uh, with any plants, they're just growing to reproduce. They are producing seeds to reproduce. This plant has one goal, and that is to make seeds to continue on the uh, existence of its kind. That's literally why plants grow and they are always trying to produce seeds. Now sometimes their seeds come in pods like these green beans. Sometimes their seeds come in uh, the form of flowers. They produce flowers and this dries up and it produces seeds. Sometimes like here's some amaranth behind me. It's going to produce long strings of seeds that dry out. That basil right there. Right now it's just the leaves of basil is what we know it for but it produces little stalks at the top, little flowers, and then dries up and has seeds in it. Tomatoes, it's producing a, a tasty fruit that is full of seeds and it's fragrant and it's bright colored because the whole goal of that plant is to get something to eat it. And that's why its seeds are encased in gel so that they can exist through a digestive tract and come out on the other end able to grow. All plants, they're just trying to produce seeds. So with that being the case, it makes sense that, for instance, with these bush beans, if they put on this first flush of pods, which is their attempt at making seeds, if I were to just leave these on the plant and not pick them, and the seeds in here were able to mature, right now they're very immature, like this bean right here, I'll just show you. I mean, obviously we know what a green bean is like. Okay, it's mostly, like, when we want to eat this, it's like mostly pod, it's like soft, delicious pod and the beans inside are very very immature 
that's so good. And so right now I'm picking off all of these immature pods and this plant thinks I haven't done my job yet. I haven't produced seeds yet. Now these still have quite a few flowers on them and really small, immature, like tiny, tiny beans that have not developed much. Most likely they're just gonna keep putting their energy into producing those and they may produce more flowers. Pole beans will keep producing flowers, like indeterminate bush in any sort of determinate plant does kind of have a limit. But picking the immature fruits absolutely sends the message to that plant to keep trying to make it seeds, which ultimately means more food for you. And it's the same thing if you're growing flowers. Like with all of these zinnias, I haven't come through and cut them because I grow them for the purpose of bringing pollinators to the garden and for the purpose of bringing color to the garden. But like if you've got zinnias or cosmos or any of the things that we talk about growing in the garden for the sake of adding beauty, the more you cut those flowers, the more flowers they're gonna produce because they're just trying to produce seeds. And when you come and cut the flowers before the seeds are developed, the plant feels like it hasn't done its job yet. As soon as plants produce developed seeds, so like if I were to leave beans on here until they produced the, the beans, they would stop putting on new flowers. They, they stop trying because it signals to them that their job is done. So a really good example of this, this last weekend, Benjamin had a baseball tournament for his All-Stars baseball team. Being like a baseball mom is new to me. My friend Samantha, her son, has played like travel ball and All-Stars and he's very, very good at baseball. I've texted her multiple times being like, oh man, this is like a lifestyle for so many people and I feel like a fish out of water. She's been very supportive <laughs> and encouraging. Though sports has never really been something that I've been super interested in. When you have a child that's heavily inclined and very, very passionate about something, you wanna be supportive. So we spent the weekend at the ball field, about 45 minutes from here. And it was fun, it was great. They did really well. They ended up getting eliminated out of the tournament on Sunday, but they played hard, it was good. Anyway, uh, being away from home much of the weekend, some of my squash got away from me. Now, this is the time of year, if you see a squash on your plant that you think, hmm, it's just a little bit small, you might wanna consider going ahead and picking it, especially if you have something else to do like that evening, because by the next day, there's a very good chance that it's gonna be too big, especially if your soil is healthy or if you're doing any sort of fertilizing. And that was the case for me, I had come out Friday morning, so we had the tournament Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I'd seen that there were some squash that were a little on the small side. And then going through the weekend, um, you know, I forgot to come out here and check them on Saturday. And then by the time I did go look at them on Sunday, they were already way too big. So I thought, well, I'll get some buckets and I'll carry them out to the pigs and didn't. Um, you know, getting ready to go to the ballpark. By the time we got home that night, it was really late, it was dark, and I was like, well, I'll do it tomorrow. So the squash were really big by the time I got to come and cut them. And all of these squash plants right here, I filled two five gallon buckets of massive squash. Took them over, fed them to the pigs, they were happy as can possibly be. And I came out two mornings later, and now those plants have all, they're all covered with blossoms. Whereas before, um, they weren't setting new blossoms. They were putting all of their energy into those massive squash because those plants are just trying to produce mature seeds. And once those squash had gotten, you know, baby size zucchini, the plants thought, okay, here's our shot. We're making these seeds. Did they think that? No, but these plants are just trying to make seeds. And in taking all of those large squash off, now I have lots more flowers to produce lots more small, nice, edible squash for me. So the point of this long and rambling story is to tell you, make sure you're harvesting your garden. If you don't have a whole lot of time, um, even if you go out and just cut the things off, okay? Even if you literally cut them off and leave them laying there. If you say, I don't want that squash, just go ahead and cut it off because you might want the next one. And if you don't cut that one off, you're telling that plant that its job's done and you're ultimately costing yourself harvest. Man, these plants are loaded. It's awesome. Look at this. On one plant, this is most definitely enough green beans for at least a couple of people for dinner. One time, if you were picking them fresh, probably enough to put in a pint if you were canning. 
and then all these plants together I think by the time I'm done I'm probably gonna fill up this five gallon bucket look at that stinker I'm talking about you I'm gonna set this mug over here instead of leaving it where it's laying in the yard and might get broken I know that probably doesn't seem like a much safer spot but it actually is <laughs> in one of the raised beds in here it's not gonna get hit with a weed whacker accidentally I really want to go in here and show you my pepper plants, but I'm not going to. I'm going to exercise self-control and not get distracted. <laughs> See all the new yellow squash blossoms over there? That's what I was talking about. When I cut those off the other day, there were not any new squash blossoms. They were not setting new fruit. All right, this bed is four feet by 16 feet. It's not entirely beans because I let volunteers grow. So I've got purple basil, I've got several zinnia plants, lots of celosia down on that end. But mostly we've got two rows of beans here, Colima bush beans. This is less than one package of seeds. And here is my first harvest from them, which is a five gallon bucket that's completely full. Completely organic, never been sprayed with anything. Um, I've actually not even used any organic pest control or organic fertilizers on these. It's just the compost that was there really from last year. Um, the chicken manure from chickens being in that garden at the end of last year and then it was tarped and covered over the winter. I didn't add any amendments when I took that tarp off. I just planted it. Of course, there were broken down wood chips from last year, which is going to add nutrition to the soil. But that's a lot of food to come out of relatively low efforts, uh, relatively low maintenance. And that's very encouraging to me. I know some things in the garden require a lot more hands-on and I know some things, you know, require a certain measure of skill. But whenever you have something like this that you know you really didn't work that hard for and you got a whole five gallon bucket worth of food. I have no idea, like, I'm not 100% sure what I would have to pay for this many beans at the grocery store because I don't know exactly how many pounds it is. So that is financial savings, but then on top of that, I don't have to depend on anybody else for that. It's just right there. And now um, that those plants are going to produce more. I'll get another big harvest off of this. Now with bush beans, they do at some point stop. They're determinate. So they're not going to just keep producing, even if I'm picking them, they're not going to just keep producing. At some point, the plants will start getting a little bit off but that's where you succession so i usually keep some pole beans going and i'll pull those to eat fresh all season i like to to do bush beans because then i'm getting lots coming on at the same time for canning or freezing um with these a lot of times what i'll do is i'll wash them i'll break the ends off and then blanch them and freeze them in freezer bags and then the way that i like to prepare those out of the freezer is i'll just put like some oil in a pan with some garlic and onions and then i just saute the beans straight out of the freezer and because they're frozen um they were they steam essentially and that they'll get soft and then i you know i cook them in that oil and stuff until they're to the texture that i like salt pepper um and then of course the garlic and onions add a lot of flavor you could put more seasoning on them if you preferred that green beans are not like the favorite of my family um whereas my family will eat their weight in like cabbage and brussels sprouts they love asparagus they uh they'll eat salads and stuff like that but mostly i like green beans a couple of the kids like green beans jeremiah that's the one thing he well i say the one thing he doesn't like tomatoes either but uh, that's one of the things he really does not care for no matter how i cook them so i will freeze these in smaller quantities so i, I usually do like a quart bag but I don't even like fill it slam full because we just won't eat that many at, at one time and as far as canning I almost always just can green beans in pints because again I don't need that much at once but I like the bush beans for preserving 
so I can do a lot at once. And then throughout the season, if I want fresh ones, I usually will go pick them off of the pole beans because those just keep producing all season long as long as you are continuing to pick them, signaling to the plant that it still needs to try to produce seeds. And with succession sowing, like right now I'm picking these Kalima beans and I'm going to go ahead and sow another bed just like that, same size of Kalima beans so that, I don't know how long it takes, 50, 45 days or something like that, 50 days from now, I can do this exact same thing again. I can pick another five gallon bucket. I can spend another rainy day preserving them. And you can keep doing that all through the season. This is where it's important to know your estimated first frost date in the fall. Mine is like at the end of October, beginning of November. So I can count back 50-ish days from that and I can keep planting these beans up to that point. I can keep planting these beans into September. It's pretty typical for me to have to come out on the morning of our first forecasted frost at the end of the season and pick green beans because I'm going to keep planting them all through the season so I can preserve enough that I can eat them all winter. Oh, I think the rain is starting. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Just in time. I got my bucket of beans, so I got something to do in the house. I bless you. Until next time.